Hey guys, this is Miss Morgan, and today we are going to be reading The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. So, there's a few things you need to do before we start reading. One is you need to get your textbook out and have it in front of you so you can follow along and continue reading yourself once I'm done with my portion. Um, you also need to have your notes out in front of you because we're going to be looking for things like the notice note signposts, which are um, words of the wiser, contrast, contradictions, again and again, aha moments, memory moment, and tough questions, right? So we're going to be looking for those different um, notes and note signposts as we read to help us better understand what we're reading. Um, so you need to have your notes out in front of you and uh, be ready to follow along. So the first thing we're going to read when we're looking at the story as it's laid out nice and neatly for us is the background. We want to understand the author and what he is writing and why he is writing it. So our author is Edgar Allan Poe. He was born in Boston to parents who were traveling actors. Orphan by the time he was three, he moved to Virginia where friends of his family raised him. As a young man, Poe worked as a journalist while writing the stories and poems that would earn him the title Father of the Modern Mystery. After his young wife died, Poe fell into despair. He passed away two years later. His dark and sometimes horrifying works perhaps mirror the darkness and sadness of his own short life. So what does the word despair mean? Despair means without hope or hopeless, right? So he had fallen into despair. He had fallen into being hopeless or without hope. So Edgar Allan Poe's stories are often dark um, and sometimes horrifying. So let's get started with the telltale heart. True, nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease has sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Hearken and observe how health healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. So in this first paragraph, what do we see? We see a lot. He's talking about how his senses are more acute. They're sharper than they were before due to a disease. That could be contrast and contradictions, right? Because usually from a disease, we would expect our senses to be dulled, not sharpened. Okay, let's continue reading. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. So we see this word conceived. What does conceived mean? To conceive an idea is to think of it. So to think of an idea is what he did. So it was impossible to say how the idea first entered my brain, but once I thought of it, it haunted me day and night. Once I conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object, there was none. Passion, there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had the eye of a vulture, a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. So what do we see here? Let's go back a little bit and talk about it. So he's talking about an old man, right? But does he hate this old man? No. He says he loves the old man. Um, and he doesn't know why he conceived of this, and it haunted him day and night. Um, whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold, and so by degree, I gradually made up my mind. So, he, this old man has this eye, right? He describes the eye as pale blue with a film over it, and this eye is haunting the author, or the narrator, or the character. And so, the narrator is telling us how, um, how he's made up his mind to kill the old man. Okay. Now this is the point. You fancy me mad. Madmen know nothing, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded with what caution, with what foresight, and with what dissimulation I went to work. So there's a word may not recognize. Dissimulation. What does that mean? A hiding of one's true feelings. So dissimulation means a hiding of one's true feelings. So it says, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded with what caution, with what foresight, and with what hiding of true feelings I went to work. With what simulation I went to work. Okay. 
I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, about midnight, I turned the latch of the door and opened it, oh so gently. And then when I had made an opening sufficient for my head, I put in a dark lantern, all closed, closed, so that no light shone out. And then I thrust in my head. Oh, you would have laughed too. See how cunningly I thrust it in? I moved it slowly, very slowly, so that I may not disturb the old man's sleep. It took me an hour to place my whole head within the opening to, so far that I could see him as he lay upon his bed. Ha! Would a madman have been so wise as this? And then, when my head was well into the room, I undid the lantern, cautiously, oh so cautiously, cautiously, for the hinges creaked. It undid, I undid it just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the vulture eye. And this I did for seven long nights, every night, just at midnight. But I found the eye always closed, and so it was impossible to do the work, for it was not the old man who vexed me. Okay, there's another word we don't recognize. Vexed. Sound judgment. No, vex means if you vex someone, you annoy that person. So the eye annoyed him, right? It was not the old man who annoyed him. It was the evil eye. And every morning when the day broke, I went boldly into the chamber and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone and inquiring to him inquiring how he passed the night. So you see, he would have been very proud, profound old man. Indeed, to suspect that every night, just at 12, I looked in upon him while he slept. Okay, so that was a long paragraph, right? So let's unpack everything that went on in there. So he was never kinder to the old man than the week before he killed him, right? So we were talking about dissimulation, how he was hiding one's true feelings. He was planning on killing him, but he was never kinder to him, right? So that's some contrast and contradictions. Um, and then we go on and we see um, we see some aspects of again and again in this story, right? The signpost again and again. We see how um, he says the dark lantern all closed, closed. We repeated the word closed. Um, we see down further in the paragraph, he says, I ended the lantern cautiously. Oh, so cautiously, cautiously. So I mean, what are we thinking about? Why would he repeat those words? Why is this important for it to be? repetition for it to be again and again and so we see that every night he is looking through a hole in the door and he is watching the old man sleep and he wants to kill him but he can't because it's not the old man who vexed him who annoys him it's the old man's evil eye right but he can't see the eye while he's sleeping okay so I'm going to read on a little bit more I'm going to read finish reading this page and read one more page and I'll have you read on your own upon the eighth night I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. A watch, a watch's minute, hands move more quickly than mine. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers, of my sagacity. I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. So there's another word with a two next to it, sagacity. What does that mean? Sound judgment. I felt the extent of my own powers, of my sound judgment. I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. To think that there I was opening the door little by little, and he, not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. I fairly chuckled at the idea, and perhaps he heard me, for he moved on the bed and suddenly, as if startled. Now you may think that I drew back, but no. His room was black as pitch. With the thick darkness, for the shutters were closed fastened through the fear of robbers, and so I knew that he could not see the opening of the door, and I kept pushing it in steadily, steadily. I had my head in, and I was about to open the lantern, when my thumb slipped upon the tin, fastening the old man, sprang up in the bed, crying out, Who's there? I kept quiet still, and said nothing. For a whole hour, I did not move a muscle, and in the meantime, I did not hear him lie down. He was still sitting up in the bed, listening, just as I have done, night after night, Hearkening to the death, watches in the wall. So we have a three next to death watches. So what is death watch? Death watch beetles, insects that make a tapping sound with their heads. So just as I have done night after night, hearkening to the death watches, to the beetles making a tapping sound with their heads. Presently, I heard a slight groan, and I knew it was the groan of a mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain or grief. Oh no, 
It was the low, stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. So we see another word, stifled. What does stifled mean? If you stifle something, you smother it. Oh, no. It was the low, smothered sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. I knew the sound well. Many a night, just at midnight, when the world slept, it had welled up from the from my own bo bosom, deepening with its dreadful echo, the terrors that distracted me. I say I knew it well. I knew what the old man felt and pitied him, although I chuckled at heart. I knew that he had been lying awake ever since the first sight, slight noise, when he had turned in the bed. His fears had, had been ever since growing upon him. He had been trying to fancy them, causeless, but could not. He had been saying to himself, it's nothing but the wind in the chimney. It is only a mouse crossing the floor. Or it is merely a cricket with which made a single chirp. Yes, he had been trying to comfort himself with all the suppositions, but he had found all vain, all in vain, because death in approaching him, and stalked with his black shadow before him, and enveloped him victim. And it was a mournful influence of the unperceived shadow that caused him to feel, although he neither saw nor heard, to fill the presence of my head within the room. When I had waited a long time, very patiently, without hearing him lie down, I resolved to open a little, a very, very little crevice with the lantern. So I opened it. You cannot imagine how stealthily, stealthily, until at length a single dim ray, like the thread of the spider, shot out from the crevice and fell full upon the vulture eye. So a lot just happened there. So let's kind of back up and talk about it. So he had peeked his head through the door like he had been doing every night. But this time he says that he almost laughed as if the old man had heard it. And the old man popped up and he had been scared, right? He had been laying there for over an hour and he couldn't see anything because it was dark. So the old man laying there for an hour wondering what could it be? Um, could it be someone in my room? Could it just be a cricket? Um, and for an hour, the narrator stood there, right? Just waiting. And then he decided to go in a little bit more with his lantern. And when he opened the door just a little bit more, he saw the eye, the evil eye, the vulture eye that he said he needed to see to get the deed done, right? And what was the deed? To kill the old man. So he has seen the vulture eye. And so now we're kind of left here wondering what will happen next. Um, I want you to read page 96, 97, and 98, and 99 on your own. Um, I've read the first half with you. I want you to read the second half on your own. And I want you to use the tools that we've used through reading um, to notice when there's a word we don't recognize and to look onto the side or the bottom of the book to find the definition, to look for the notice and note signposts. We've seen again and again, we've seen contrast contradictions. Those nose note signposts will help us better understand what we're reading. So I want y'all to notice those. Um, and I want you to really think about what you're reading as you read it, what's actually happening um, in the story, not just the words you see. So y'all can go ahead and work on that. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always message your teacher. Um, we're always available. And so I want you to start reading this on your own.